Our students will start talking about addressing in standard Ethernet. Students, every single station or every single device that we have got in the Ethernet has got its own network interface card or the NIC card. Students, every NIC card or network interface card has got a fixed or a unique uh, link layer address or a physical address. Students, in the case of standard Ethernet, this address is 6 bytes or 48 bits long. And we normally represent that by using hexadecimal notation with a colon that separates our bytes. Students, as you can see on the slide, we've got a, a particular Ethernet MAC address. It's also called as a MAC address, a physical address or a link layer address. And you have gone through that extensively in our previous discussions of data link layer. But this is how we represent that. So in, in this particular case, you've got 4A um, colon 30 colon 10 colon 21, colon 10, colon 1A. This is a, an example of a MAC address or a link layer address. Students, we'll go to the slide and have a look at the transmission of these address bits. And the point that I'm trying to make here is that in this particular case, how we transmit the bit is not how we actually write um, a specific address bit in the case of Ethernet. So the address in this particular case is left is transmitted left to right byte by byte but students for each byte the least significant bit is sent first and the most significant bit is sent last in the first case we have got 47 as a hexadecimal so we will convert it into its corresponding binary and as you can see our least significant bit is sent first and our most significant bit is kept to the last. And students, um, this is, uh, as you can see, we are sending it from left to right, uh, byte by byte, as, um, as you see. Now students, the reason we send the least significant bit first and the most significant bit the last is that the, the bit that defines the address as uh, being a unicast, and we'll talk about that in the, in the next slide, but for you to know, um, the, the least significant bit that's going first, it will tell the receiver whether the address is a unicast address or a multicast address or if it is a broadcast address. Up students, um, as soon as the receiver uh, looks at this least significant bit that comes in, it, it will know that the frame that it's going to receive is, um, is actually unicast or multicast. Students, um, exactly the same thing in, the, in a particular figure. So as you can see, the least significant bit of the first byte, if it is a 0, that represents a unicast address. If it is a 1, it represents a multicast address. Students, go that the source address is always a unicast address. So your, um, your frame will always come from one particular source station. So your source address is always unicast. Up students, your destination address, in this particular case, it can be, as I told you, it can be unicast, it can be a multicast, or it can be a broadcast. If the least significant bit, as you can see, is 0, it is unicast. And if it is 1, it is multicast. Students, example ko dekhenge. Or is example mein, we have got three different types of the destination addresses. Students, um, in the case, first case, we have got an address that's given, given in hexadecimal. Once again, different bytes separated by colons. And as you can see, it, this is a unicast address. And the reason for that is because A in the binary you've got 4A as your first byte. A in binary is 1010. And in this particular case, you have got 0 at the least significant bit. Therefore, this is a unicast address. So it's the second one, the 7, you've got 47. And 7 in binary is 0111. You've got 1 in the least significant bit position. So this is our multicast address. And students, 
uh, the broadcast address has got a very specific identity. It is it consists of all Fs. It consists of all ones. So wherever you see all Fs in hexadecimal separated by separated by colons, then that is essentially our broadcast address. So students, just a little bit about how the unicast, multicast, and broadcast frames are distinguished from each other in the case of standard Ethernet. Students, as I told you, all frames in Ethernet are by nature broadcast. So students, if all the frames are by nature broadcast, then how will we know which of the frames is a unicast and which of the frames is a multicast? Students, we know that by specifying the way these frames are actually treated when they reach the destination. Students, just to give you an example, let's suppose um, A in this first figure, it needs to send something to G. So our source is A and our destination is G. Students, what's going to happen is, in this particular case, A will send a unicast to G. Students, in unicast transmission, in this particular case, this B will receive it, C will also receive it, D will get it as well, E will get it as well, F will get it as well, and G and H. All of the uh, stations on our bus, this is a bus topology by the way, will actually get that frame. But students, all the other stations will look at the unicast address for in that frame and will discard that frame. And in this particular case, D will, will look at this address and it will, I'm sorry, station G will look at it, this address. This is our ultimate destination and it will accept this particular frame. So it's in the case of multicast as well, if we are sending a multicast, only a particular group that's included in a multicast will have a look at that destination address and will accept uh, the frame. All the other stations will, will actually discard that particular frame. And students, in a broadcast transmission, all stations, except, of course, the sender, will receive the frame, and all stations, except the sender, will keep the data and handle it as well. 